Hello, I'm Robbie Clark. Welcome to my workshop. Uh, getting very, very cold in the workshop uh, today. Uh, this is uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, I was going to come out here uh, early this morning and, and make this little video, but um, it was minus seven in the workshop this morning. Uh, it's not much better now. It's um, just under minus four. Um, I mean, I guess that um, during the night it was even lower than minus seven, but uh, th there we are. This is uh, the winter time, so uh, what can you do? I'm um, going to make this a, a fairly short video today because it is very, very cold out here and I don't want to stay out here too long. But um, earlier in the week, um, my wife and I visited uh, one of our local antique moles. Um, it's sort of antique and sort of memorabilia and, and things of that nature. But we have been there several times before and uh, I picked up one or two quite interesting uh, uh, tool items in the past. Um, I mean, not always things that I can actually use, um, but I'm a bit of a sucker for the old workshop tools. I um, mean, I, I do sort of collect the old things that, that interest me, but I, I do try um, and if I can buy things that I'm actually going to use. Um, I did spot on the, the antique smalls, obviously, like all, all others, they're divided up into little booths, each booth owned by a different person. Um, and the items are all labelled uh, with the price on them and the booth number, so that when you, you pay for them at a, a sort of central uh, cash desk near the door, um, they can obviously sort of credit the sales to the owner of the, the particular booths. And I, on two of the booths, I noticed they had some of these really nice um, old fashioned style oil cans. Um, it's something that I really wanted to find uh, one of these. Um, they're the type where you press the base in and they make this sort of wonderful clicking noise. Um, some of them I looked at which were really nice but they'd actually rotted away on the base so um, not an item, an item that could be used obviously if it was purely for a collection that'd be fine but I, I actually want one of these to be able to use it. This one is very nice because it's actually made by a, a famous American brand, I don't know if you could see the Eagle Eagle uh, make the, the sort of iconic um, cylindrical brass um, oil cans which uh, in my experience are almost impossible to find in England. Um, I'd love to own one um, but looking at the uh, listings on eBay they're, they're all from American sellers and although some of them are at reasonable prices the killer is the the postage costs from America are often more than the actual item. Um, well, this wasn't, you know, terribly expensive. It's um, uh, not made out of brass. It's uh, some some form of steel. Um, and by the um, identify the colour, these I gather were um, nickel plated and then copper plated. Obviously the plating on this is, is pretty much worn out, but um, the lid fits on quite nicely. Um, it still has the seal inside the, the lid, so everything seems to be in nice order. So at some point I'm going to fill this with fairly light oil. And the, what I want to use this for it is to oil at the various moving parts on the little um, steam engines um, that I've built. I think this would be quite good for that. Um, one of the other um, ones I saw there which I would have loved to have bought, it was one um, with the, the trade name Singer which I'm, I'm guessing probably was used uh, many years back to oil Singer sewing machines but unfortunately that one the base was almost completely missing, it had been completely sort of rotted away. So I mean, I'm quite pleased with that, it's quite nice, it, it, it looks lovely. Um, 
not as an ornament it will be something um, that I'll use another item I spotted was this um, I and mean, I do like sort of unusual looking tools um, I'd not seen one of these before um, I, I it, it checked uh, through e eBay as well um, to see if there was anything similar to this but I, mean, I couldn't find anything like it at all but this is um, a very famous um, English brand the brand is Footprint and their logo literally I mean, you probably can't see that it is actually a footprint um, I'm sure a lot of um, people will, will recognize this brand and footprints still exist um, in, in the same town they were made in Sheffield I mean a lot of tools uh, uh, made in England came from the from Birmingham and the Birmingham area in the West Midlands but this was Sheffield um, the company when it was formed a very very long time ago in the early 1800s um, was uh, started by um, the gentleman that was in the cutlery business that was his why um, uh, the factory was formed in Sheffield it's basically um, a sort of cutter it's like an end cutter these two blades coming together but it has a a really nice action to it uh, and an unusual type of spring I don't know if the spring in this is uh, genuine and an original you know, it's possible the spring uh, may have been changed and added later um, we did search the internet and managed to find um, a download of the footprint catalogue from 1970 and it actually listed this item, this form of nipper cutter. Um, but the design was actually slightly different. It had a different form of spring in, in here. I mean, it has all sorts of other holes in here, which I, mean, I don't really know what the purpose of these, these holes were. I guess this pin is uh, restricting the, the movement of the jaws. I, I don't really know, but... Uh, it's you know probably an interesting thing to use and when I can imagine this could be used to nip the ends off of, uh, of small uh, copper rivets or something of that nature it probably had a, a proper industrial purpose at the time but um, it wasn't an expensive item I think this was about five pounds and I just couldn't resist it and it will go in the drawer with a lot of other unusual uh, pliers and grips that I've got and you know, it will find a purpose at some some point I'm, I'm absolutely sure the third item I bought uh, is not something I'm going to use it's a blow lamp um, I thought of buying one of these for a long time it's basically a, a reminder of my dad um, my dad had um, a blow lamp in his workshop and I can remember him using this when I was very very small um, you know uh, it, it, in my sort of early school days I guess where when you were decorating the, a home um, and repainting all the woodwork um, woodwork often had many many layers of paint and my dad often did very thorough jobs to um, DIY work um, DIY work around the house and would often burn a lot of the old paint work off and, and, and use a scraper to get the, the paint off uh, the, the woodwork because of, well, I suppose at that point there weren't um, available sort of chemical means of um, of getting old paint off uh, door frames window frames and, and so forth I think these were filled with um, uh, paraffin um, or kerosene I think is, is, is the term in, in, in the US um, they were in this um, antique mold there were a few of these on, on different uh, booths um, but I really like this one because the bodywork of it is is brass. Um, 
a lot of these uh, fittings on here are, are, are made out of brass. The uh, flame part here is all, uh, I guess it's, it's steel, and yeah, with a steel handle on the back. Um, I think to use one of these, uh, you'd have to have nerves of steel to use one of these. They, to me, they always look very dangerous, and, and as a small child, very frightened to see it, because um, I think you, know, you, you fill the base of this with paraffin, and then the pump is used to introduce um, air into the container as well, so that this would uh, force the... Um, the paraffin and air through the burner here. I'm not absolutely sure. I remember watching my dad uh, fill one of these up and, uh, and and actually get it ready for use and I did find it rather scary to watch him do it but um, this is going to be um, it will be a sort of a, a sort of a restoration project for me in the workshop and what I don't like to see on anyone that restores tools where they polish the life out of tools. I hate it when they restore items like this and then wire wheel it down so it looks like um, a shiny chrome tool. I think that absolutely spoils it. I love to see the patina on tools. Um, I think it absolutely ruins things when people um, wire wheel and buff things up to to restore them and this is going to have a very gentle uh, restoration this will probably just be wiped over um, just to get any sort of dirt off it it's, it's got some corrosion on here uh, which i intend to sort of just try and remove some of the corrosion very very gently um, you know, and i'd hate to um, sort of ruin the appearance but this is really just going to be um, an item I can put on the shelf in the workshop. Uh, just it really is a reminder of, of my youth and my dad when he was uh, uh, doing DIY projects around the house. I think this is a really beautiful thing. Considering um, the, the materials in this, that you know, there's a lot of sort of brass, beautifully uh, machined. Um, I think this was about eight pounds. Um, I thought for something like this it was really marvellous. I think if these were still being used and something was produced like this nowadays, I, I would be horrified to think of how much money it would cost to buy one of these if they were made now and buying it brand new. I think you'd be looking at a very, very expensive tool. Um, but uh, I think this is, this is really a, a lovely item. Um, the only other thing I bought uh, recently is when we, I usually go food shopping with my wife and uh, we uh, we vary where we go but we, we often go to um, Aldi and Lidl uh, to do our shopping. It's a matter of uh, economising on the cost of things at these days but we were in um, Lidl quite recently and um, They've always got some tools there, but I did spot uh, this set of um, of uh, hex keys or Allen keys. Um, I've got quite a lot of um, Allen keys anyway, but they are something that I use a great deal in the workshop. There's you know, so many uh, uses around the workshop for them, but the attraction of this set was... Um, even the small um, Allen keys are all quite long and then you find that and obviously with these they vary in size according to the, uh, the the size of the hex key itself but often when you get down to the very small ones they're very short um, and for some things it, it's nice to have a much longer uh, reach to them um, this one came with a, a handle as well, um, where you can pull the, um, the Allen key out of the handle. And you see it's got uh, lots of slots. Let me see if I can get this out easily. That pops out. Oh, there we are. 
and then you can turn this device around to the various sizes. It fits, it doesn't fit all these sizes and you wouldn't necessarily need the big handle like that on the small ones but um, it fits the sizes from 10 millimeters through to 5 mil. So you just revolve that round and then hook the, um, the hex key into it. So I think it's quite a, a useful uh, thing to have. And I've got a lot of um, hex keys with uh, sort of T handles on the top. I've got several sets of those in different places in the workshop. Um, and I don't use the, the very large sizes that often, but um, I thought it was quite a, an interesting set. I think this was a uh, you know, sort of penny under five pounds, something like that. But I thought it would be quite useful to have some with um, longer, smaller uh, uh, hex keys on it. That might be of interest to you or not, I don't know. Well, I hope you, you, you sort of found some interest in that. It's, and um, it is a bit of a an obsession, I suppose, for, for tools, but you know, having been brought up you know, spending hours in my dad's workshop and all of the old tools, some of the tools that, that my dad had, I own now uh, in my own workshop. A lot of them are, well, most of them, I guess, are woodworking tools because um, that was what my dad did. He was a, a very, very clever woodworker, um, but a lot of the other tools that he had, uh, my brother has a, a, a lot of them as well. We um, sort of share them between us, but when my dad stopped, um, when he got very, very old and stopped um, being able to do work in the wood shop, his wood shop, um, he said to both of us, you know, if there's anything you need for any any work in your own houses, you know, just sort of take whatever you want. So gradually, um, a lot of the tools came in my hands and my brother's hands. Um, but when my father passed away. Um, we uh, sort of cleared uh, the sort of workshop out and uh, uh, sort of, uh, sort of. well I think I had most of the, the, the remaining tools that were in the workshop and I still use them, it's a nice memory when you're using these old tools, you know, you, you think of uh, your dad and the, the times you spent in the workshop with him. Well anyway, thank you for joining me again. Uh, rather short video as soon as I finish this video I'm going to go back indoors again because it is very very cold out here um, thank you also for everyone that subscribed to my channel I mean if you haven't already subscribed I'd be honoured if, if you would do and again thank you very much for the very nice comments I've been receiving so very very nice comments recently it's, it's the great thing about the um, the YouTube uh, community that uh, Although um, some of the people watching my video are thousands of miles away from the UK, uh, you know, in Australia, the US, um, and a lot of um, Eastern European countries as well. It's surprising. Sometimes you don't know exactly where uh, people are watching your videos, um, but if they uh, subscribe, and sometimes you can sort of work out from their names uh, you know, which countries they come from. Um, I do know that sort of uh, I've had one or two uh, people subscribe from the Ukraine, which, you know, considering it's a, a war-torn country, it's very nice that people are still trying to uh, live as normal lives as possible. Well, anyway, thanks very much again for joining me today, and I uh, hope to have another video for you very, very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.